What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. Earthmaster here on this Thursday, April 7, 2022, about uh, 12.02 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 2.8 earthquake into the region of South America. Let's go ahead and check out uh, some activity around the globe here. That has taken place over the last 24 hours. Uh, looking at the USGS map here, showing that movement. Uh, just had a 3.7 off the coast of Oregon here. Uh, north of the Gorda Ridges and right around the Blanco Fracture Zone, uh, that earthquake occurring at uh, 1745 UTC time, so about an hour or so ago on the map. Uh, we also had some further activity up here in the Vancouver Island Ranges early this morning. We've seen a pretty good sign signature of an earthquake, but uh, to no avail, nothing being reported up there from the Vancouver area. So um, just a little bit of missing info, but uh, they did report a 3.7 off the coast of Oregon um, just about an hour or so ago. Uh, looking at the rest of the west coast, go ahead and bring down the all magnitudes here. And a little bit of activity kicking up here throughout the uh, Mount St. Helens area, just to the south of the summit region. A little couple small microquakes and a little bit of movement throughout the uh, Cascades here outside of Eugene in Oregon and uh, a little bit of activity into northern california including check this out here just north of mount shasta around the shasta valley area seen a 1.7 that one pretty deep though at about 17 kilometers mount shasta itself looks pretty quiet as far as uh, activity goes there at that uh, beautiful volcano uh, working our way down into northern california still seeing quite the swarm here around the cob mountain area of course the hydrothermal operations out here in this region do play a major part and the activity that goes on there um, below the ground. Some movement over here around the eastern part of the Sierra Nevada as well, right around the Antelope Valley area. Seen a couple twos and some ones in the mix today. Pretty uh, shallow earthquake movement on that side of the uh, of the Sierras. Also Long Valley Super Volcano here just outside of there. Still seeing a swarm here. This uh, area has seen quite a bit of movement over the past 30 days. I want to bring up the all magnitudes here and uh, show you guys the amount of movement here just outside of Long Valley. Of course, the Caldera area sits right here around this region. Uh, nothing specifically within the Caldera itself. Just this little swarm of about, uh, well, if you get rid of this, if we include this activity here around Round Valley, uh, which sits just south of Long Valley Supervolcano. It is within the volcanic table and uh, area. Uh, we're looking at about 130 earthquakes or so. And uh, most of them uh, microquakes. These are the uh, 2.5 and above. The largest looks like a 3.9 and a 3.3. So uh, swarms do occur. They do happen out there around supervolcanoes. Uh, it's when the bigger earthquakes start to happen that we need to worry when it comes to uh, you know a possible impending eruption there of a of a super volcano, as far as uh, larger earthquakes go, we'd be looking at probably fours and fives uh, before that thing blew. Uh, around the Bay Area, south into the San Jose area, just south of there along the Calaveras Fault Zone, uh, seen some movement today. A couple microquakes up and down the uh, plate boundary there, the San Andreas. Also here in the Ridgecrest region. Looks like uh, some continued activity here from the uh, prior events there a couple years ago. Down here in Southern California, uh, latest quake in the red circle there near Anza, 1.2 at uh, 7 kilometers. No major swarming to report. A uh, little bit of movement still outside of the Indio area. Eight earthquakes. Uh, most of them, actually it looks like all of these here from uh, last night. Uh, so no further renewed movement taking place there in this area overnight about ready to drop off that map there uh, throughout the desert southwest not a whole lot going on a little bit of movement up here in the utah area looks like uh, just outside of milford area seeing about 12 earthquakes all microquakes in that region notice the swarm over here that we've been looking at for quite a while um, along the cedar utah area kind of hugged up against these mountains here we haven't seen any further movement in this region in the past couple days though but uh, expect that to kick up as west coast pressure increases up here around the Yellowstone area seeing uh, a little bit of swarming kicking up here 
A little bit of uh, reporting as well on the USGS side. 21 earthquakes around the vicinity of Yellowstone National Park. I believe the seismograph stations have been updated. Uh, looks like they were doing some, uh, some back end uh, updating on their seismograph stations. I've seen the uh, University of Utah put out a social media post and they mentioned that they were working on their system, so that's good. So the dates have been updated. Look at that, 4647. There is some earthquake activity occurring here within the last hour or so. I do want to bring up, uh, hopefully we'll be able to check out yesterday's activity here. Uh, we'll go ahead and go back to the previous day and see if they have been reported. It doesn't look like it. This is still from the third. So we were stuck on that for a couple days. But at least they've got uh, at least they got the updated data coming in right now from the sixth and seventh. So a couple days still missing, absent, not for sure. You know if we'll get those back. It doesn't look like they're going to include it in there, but uh, it is what it is. Looking at the data over the last couple hours here, some movement. Uh, and even this here kind of looks like it's behind a little. Hold on a second here. We uh, go to the next day. It's still not on there. So I wonder what they're doing here. Look at the the timestamps. UTC time. No, 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 no. We're right. We're right. 1830 UTC time. I was looking over here at the uh, uh, regional time. So we're good on that. As uh, far as earthquake activity goes, definitely some popping up here. looks like south and around the Pitchstone Plateau seeing all these uh, earthquakes. Those are very defined, very, very defined earthquakes, uh, but also very localized, uh, and they're not super big. Uh, some of the activity spreading over, you can see it here around the Mount Sheridan area, just slightly on this seismograph, but uh, here around the Flag Ranch Pitch, uh, Pitchstone Plateau area looks to be the epicenter of this uh, earthquake activity. There's a good handful there. Let's go ahead and check out, see what the USGS uh, has here and you can see that location right around the uh, Pitchstone Plateau looks like a little south of there about 14 earthquakes and a little microquake swarm looks like the largest one so far a 1.4 in this little area kind of an odd area to get a swarm because most of the time here in Yellowstone uh, we look at areas here around the northwest corner and also over here around the Yellowstone Lake uh, this area does see quite a bit of uh, swarming activity I haven't seen uh, this area have a swarm in quite some time. In fact, I don't even re recall it ever having a swarm down here in this region. I'll double check that uh, in in the update tonight, but this is kind of newer movement and it's still uh, somewhat uh, situated here in the southern end of the caldera. This black line here is the uh, Yellowstone caldera, the super volcano there in Wyoming, and it just sits uh, this earthquake swarm just sits right around the southern end of it. So we're going to watch that pretty closely. There's some new new activity kicking up there in Yellowstone. But it uh, looks like they got things fixed there as far as the data coming in and the reporting goes. So maybe they're just going to, uh, you know, put out some quality, quality content here and, and reporting uh, when it comes to the earthquake activity up here. Uh, let's see, Idaho, some movement up here on the northern end of the Sawtooth Fault Zone. Uh, quite a few twos kicking up here. Looks like a 2.6, the largest in that cluster of earthquakes. Uh, what else we got here? Pecos, Texas. A little bit of movement. A couple twos down there in the Texas New Mexico border. And Oklahoma kind of kicking up here a little bit. Severe weather event looking likely up here throughout uh, a good portion of the southern plains and uh, areas around it uh, next week. So be weather aware. It's supposed to be a pretty significant outbreak possibly it's a ways off but uh, look look to your weather forecast here if you live around the southern plains and uh, parts of the south next week things could be uh, turning pretty crazy in the severe weather department 2.1 around the Medford Oregon or Medford Oklahoma area New Madrid zone looks pretty quiet one earthquake out here this morning around South Carolina uh, 2.0 at 2.9 kilometers Puerto Rico, what do we got going on here? Things kind of mellowing out out here. Only about seven earthquakes around the Puerto Rico area. Nothing significant. 3.2, the largest. South America, a couple earthquakes into the Peru Chile Trench. 5.1, the largest in this little sequence here of earthquakes. Of course, quite a few twos and threes mixed in there as well, but not showing up here on the USGS map. Looking at the 
activity here on the Big Island, mostly confined here to the southeast region here of the Big Island of Hawaii. Quite a few twos mixed in there, around 33 to 36 kilometers below the surface. Backing out here, uh, pretty quiet throughout the Pacific Ring of Fire areas south here along the uh, Mariana Trench and through the Fiji Islands area. Look at this. I mean, it, this has been quiet for a couple days now here in the Vanuatu. Fiji uh, Tonga Trench did see some activity here uh, oh, towards the weekend, but things have just been uh, absent here of earthquake activity. Got to watch that pretty closely. I'm sure we're going to start seeing some much deeper large quakes here in this little area very soon. As uh, far as activity westward, though, into the Philippines, some movement outside of this region as well. Uh, fours and uh, even a 5.0 in this area uh, just outside of Manila western side here close to the South China Sea and Indonesia and the Java Trench all shown some activity as well not a whole lot going on over here in this area of the world uh, Greece Poland did see a 4.7 that's kind of a kind of a larger quake up there for Poland area 8.3 kilometers was felt on the pager it looks like it is in the yellow uh, pretty uh, eh, somewhat deep 8.4 kilometers below the surface for that uh, 4.7 in Poland Let's see what else we got here and the Atlantic Ocean out here in the central mid Atlantic Ridge seen a 5.1 uh, trimmer map from last night was still um, up there in terms of the multitudes of trimmer taking place 282 epicenters of tremor last night, uh, or yesterday, I should say, around the Vancouver Island ranges and down here into the coastal range of Oregon. This updated map will be put out tonight for the update. Uh, it normally comes out around 6 to 6.30 p.m. California time, so we'll definitely include that there in the update uh, this evening. There is the, I bet you, that is the earthquake that we've seen there on the Vancouver Island ranges uh, this morning. That was a 4.0 at 12.12. Uh, 12. Yeah, that would make sense. That would definitely be the earthquake we've seen this morning showing up. Uh, Missy Mimi was up and took a screenshot of it. Just kind of show me uh, that there was a pretty good sized quake, at least re being recorded on the seismograph. Now, not a large quake, but there's definitely a uh, um, something that should show up on, on the maps and the seismograph stations. USGS not reporting this 4.0 up here uh, in the region at all for some reason, even though technically 4.0 and above should be their their motto right for the international community. Uh, let's see, looking back here, this earthquake just off the uh, coast of Port Alice, BC area, the plate boundary uh, shows this. It was kind of right out here in the plate boundary between the Explorer plate, which kind of sits up here to the north, and the Juan de Fuca plate. A lot of people call this just one Juan de Fuca plate, but uh, it's uh, definitely three separate uh, small little microplates, and they're all, of course, subducting underneath the North American plate. Uh, but this area right here has seen a little bit of swarming out here over the past week and the past couple weeks here. And uh, that's where they had that four-pointer at 10 kilometers this morning. Uh, so no doubt some further uh, pressure up here. And I'm sure it's contributed to the, uh, the amount of trimmer that be they've been seeing up here in the Cascadia subduction zone down dip. Got to remember that trimmer activity ultimately applies strain up here on the locked area and uh, further areas here to the west. Uh, solar weather activity. Checking out the movement uh, or lack of movement here on the sun. Of course, that was a dud that came through. Pretty much a dud. We did have some little bit of elevated uh, KP indexes last night up around the KP index of four, but we never did reach that threshold of the G1 class storm uh, that was being predicted. Uh, still looks like it may be possible. I doubt it. They're going to update this here pretty soon. Um, so yeah, kind of a dud when it comes to the uh, um, activity that the sun's been throwing at us. Uh, these guys are reporting this morning here. Uh, as of the update, there has been no clear-cut sign that the faint CME generated by a filament eruption on the 3rd has reached Earth. It is possible that it could have missed our planet, or was perhaps too weak to fully notice. A G1 geomagnetic storm watch will remain in effect in the short term, 6 hours, in case it is running late. But obviously, not coming in. Things going back down to the green level. 
the Aurora forecast uh, proves that as well. Solar wind data and the density and whatnots here was a little elevated, but I think it was pretty weak uh, from that filament that came in and just or just missed us. Uh, but things looks like thing kind of looks like they're starting to mellow back down here in terms of the uh, speed and the density. Solar weather activity far as the sunspot movement uh, goes or lack of sunspot green across the board only a 40% chance of a sea flare. And looking at the dynamics here of all these sunspots, they're not really impressive at the moment. They're, uh, they're, they're definitely sunspots, right? But they're not all impressive. There's no complexity, complex, complexity when it comes to the, well, the entanglement, I guess you could call it, of the, uh, of the polarity of the fields. That one's a nice sunspot for sure, but it's just not, uh, not likely that we'll see anything kick up here at all in the flaring for, for at least a few days to come. All right, folks, have a good day. Stay safe out there, and uh, we will chat you guys tonight for the update. And um, enjoy, the, uh, enjoy this beautiful day. Have a good day, folks. Peace.